This is Heart Rhythm TV, and I'm Aliani Mejia, and I have the pleasure to have today Dr. Pamela Mason. Pamela was actually my program director and a close friend of mine and a true mentor for me. She's currently the EP Lab Director at UVA, and thank you so much, Pam, for being with me. Uh, I actually Always. have, thank you so <laughs> much. I have, uh, a, I have the theme for today, and the theme for today is very important. Uh, it talks about team matters and I wanted to ask you since you're the EP lab director mm -hmm. and have run the lab for a couple of years now uh, how do you encourage your team to be better mm -hmm. uh, to give them all and to work for their patients in the for the best of all, the whole team yeah. as a whole yeah there's no question that in electrophysiology and running an electrophysiology lab having a really strong team and teamwork is critically important. It's critically important for a lot of fields in medicine, but electrophysiology is very tech heavy, right? We have a lot of issues we have to manage. We have to take care of the patient, um, you know, monitor their vital signs. We're dealing with potentially lethal heart rhythm abnormalities, sedation. We have to have excellent nursing. We have to have excellent techs, right? Who are able to manage the fluoroscopy and the advanced mapping and also importantly, all of these groups have to understand each other and what each other is doing. Yeah. Then we have post-procedure care, pre-procedure care, um, advanced practice providers are critically involved in all of that. And again, if they don't understand what's going on in the lab, how can they prepare the patients appropriately for yeah. the procedures and take care of them afterwards? And so that team is critically important and them all working together well is really important. Um, things we've found that have been super helpful, cross-training. Right? If the nurses actually train and understand what the techs are doing, and to some degree, as much as they can, yeah. the techs mm -hmm. is, you know, vice versa, they really understand better and are able to help and participate in the procedure more. Um, the nurse practitioners and our clinical practice nurses, if we can get them into the lab and actually so they can see what's going on, mm -hmm. and then they can really appreciate the other members of the team and what they're doing and do an even better job for the patients in their own role. So excellent. So you're talking about a key important uh, uh, points about building an EP lab. We're talking about education, mm -hmm. integration of the team, and communication. Mm -hmm. So those are very important in order to be successful. Right. Uh, can you tell me about uh, your challenges? Tell me about, since you started being the EP lab director, mm -hmm. what are the main challenges that you face every day or mm -hmm. perhaps the, the main one? Yeah. You know, anytime we have staff turnover, mm -hmm. because it is such a, a, a tech heavy field and there's a lot of training required, yeah. um, lab turnover of the staff can be really challenging. And that's another area where cross training and, and the different members of the staff really understanding can be helpful, right? Because when we have new, uh, you know, a new tech, if the nurses really understand what's going on, they can be helpful in training that person Definitely. as well. So I would say lab turnover um, in, in such a heavily trained, you know, a field where education is so important and experience is so important can be really challenging. I can imagine because you invest so much time in that person mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. now you know how yeah. they interact with you and with others. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can imagine how that could be. One more question, actually uh, taking into what happened today and what happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. As a woman, I have to say that Pamela was my main role model. Uh, one of the reasons why I went to EP, mm -hmm. uh, and for me, it's, it's, it's great to see you. It's, it's great to, to, to role model in you. I think that uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, but I also want to uh, hear from you. Have you face any difficulties being a woman and also uh, being the leader of the mm -hmm. staff uh, or how, how that's played? No, no, yeah. Not a big problem at yeah. all or actually... Uh, there, you know, there's been a dramatic difference in electrophysiology during the time that I was a fellow in attending. I've been an attending physician for about 15 years now. And just in that 15 years, we still have low numbers of women in electrophysiology, but what we do have is a lot of women in very high you know, in very high positions. So if you look at the Heart Rhythm Society, you know, it's less than 10% of electrophysiologists are women, but it's way more than that as far as women in leadership positions. And we've been fortunate to have two female presidents. Back to back. Back mm -hmm. to back, which has, been, which has been wonderful. And just having that visibility 
you, you know, it really highlights to the, the wider community that women are there, women are in, in, in this field and, and are contributing. It's exactly touching the point of this morning plenary that it was team matters, diversity matters. Mm -hmm. And actually, thank you so much, Pan. Taking so key point of what you say, education, uh, teamwork, uh, and, and, and communication are the three key points to have a successful EP Lab. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, Pan. It's been an honor to have you, and this is Heart Rhythm TV, and see you next time.